tinfoil hat. No, oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed, and, 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 and a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to tinfoil hat. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Aaron, open your mind. Drink. From the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Are you ready to get your mind blown? And welcome to Tinfoil Hat. You know who I am. You know what I'm here to do. I'm here to rock. Okay, loving it. Joining me as always, my partner in crime, the man, the myth, the legend, Xavier Guerrero. What's up? How are you, Xavier? You're looking good, buddy. You're the only one who's gotten more attractive. Oh, in, no, no, in, no. During this epidemic. I disagree. I disagree. I'm really? What's, what's falling off? You, you, I don't know how everything's high and tight. How's that? How are you doing that? Uh, not by myself, but it's not the same. I'm using a uh, manscape. A little bit of manscape now on my face, which is you know you're not supposed to do that, but that's I why I like you. Yeah, it's not you're recommended, but I got no barber right now, so I gotta I gotta handle it myself. You're using your nut scissors on your face. I like yep. that. Sorry. Dangerous times need <laughs> dangerous actions, brother. Uh, and join us on the ones and twos. Uh, him and his uh, fake girlfriend have really been enjoying the time together. I got to work around her and this imaginary person that no one's ever met. My good friend and yours. Johnny Nice, a.k.a. Johnny Wooded. How are you, Johnny? You're going to write some new material someday, Sam. No, no. That's <laughs> the beauty of the pandemic. You get to use the same stuff over and over again. Okay. Hey, hey, buddy. Uh, I'm hey, a- how was your mother's day? <laughs> well, you know, my mom's uh, 2,000 miles away, so I sent her an e-card. What, what was the – like, <laughs> dude, cards are hard, right? Cards are hard. I feel a lot of pressure now to get a really good singing card, and if you don't go early, they're all out, and then – yeah, I don't ever remember them being out of cards, like just completely out of cards. Before. Yeah, yeah, welcome. To, well, you went from like, you went from North Carolina to Los Angeles. That's I've like, been here. No. I mean, I've had three years here. I don't remember them being completely everywhere out of cards. It's like paper towels. I guess just because everybody's at home, everybody's buying cards this year and mailing. You yeah, think it's, they have it was a, coronavirus cards? You think they have a get well from <laughs> coronavirus cards? Get well from coronavirus? Yeah. They just, just got Bill Gates looking to hug you. <laughs> Those would all be in stock, believe me. There aren't it's enough. unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's, uh, this whole thing is just chaos. Just chaos. And now we got this, all this wonderful stuff going on. But everything we've been telling you for five years, five years on this show, even though the show is only three years old, but for five years, we've been, we've been so right, we added two years. That's how, that's how good, how right this show is. My baby's crying over the fact that you guys have been calling me a crazy person. Right, they know they only know the truth. My babies don't even know what MSMB, MSM fucking lies are. They only get straight truth. No GMO food in this household. Okay, your babies are gonna be a real experiment in that because they're not. Yeah. You're right. They're not gonna know anything about. They're gonna be like, what's CNN? Like, yeah, what's CNN? <laughs> right. That's gonna and be just like. What do you mean? Listen to your politicians. They can go kiss dicks, dude. Right. Um, guys, a lot of great stuff is going on. I mean the the. The uh, first of all, Johnny, uh, tell us about Broken Simulation real quick. How great am I on that? You're uh, you're so good. If you think he's good on this, watch him on Broken Simulation because he's five times as good on that. Dude, I bring all my stories from the week. I break shit down. It's in depth. It's a little something different from Sam. Yeah, Triple if you want to watch you know. it, it's YouTube.com forward slash Sam Trivoli Comedy. It's also on in podcast form anywhere you consume podcasts. And it's got a Patreon. It does yeah, got a Patreon. Yeah, broken series. Right no, now, right. it's uh, my mom and Johnny's mom are our Patreons. No, right now, we, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> we're signing up. It's good. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We're just trying to make a difference in our community. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and what's going on with the stripper and cocaine in, in uh, Espanol podcast? Uh, How's that thing, going? It's going tonight again. You guys uh, really are freedom fighters. Yeah, fool. We need the strip clubs back open. George is dying. I know, I know strip club regulars. They're dying for the strip club to be open. You know, uh, dude, 
as a, a new father and just like what it goes through, my heart goes out to all those single mothers who can't make any of that, like, you know, champagne room cash right now because they, because our, 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 our lizard people governors have shut this all down. Let the single mothers dance. Yeah. Let them dance. They need money. The kids need money. They're not going to school. They got to hear the mom. Oh, that's so great, dude. That's so great. I would education I would from pay, a stripper. That should be a YouTube channel. Stripper moms doing homeschooling. I would watch <laughs> that forever. Forever. That'd be the best channel. Everybody be happy. Dad, you know, we learned something, right? I mean, it's a one I would I would watch stripper homeschool forever. <laughs> Guys, uh check out Broken Simulation. Check out uh george perez stories those are great shows and uh you know i mean there's so much i want to talk about so much obama gay is exploding right now uh which will do once people come to grips with that that will eventually lead to uh everyone realizing debbie wasserman schultz put a hit out on seth rich hired two ms13 guys and guess what happened to those guys they're dead now too it's unbelievable, dude. All we do is win, 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 no matter what on this podcast. How come the listenership of this podcast isn't uh, seven billion? I mean, where else are you gonna get that straight truth? Nowhere. Nowhere. Right? Here, I mean, only here. Only here, dude. I mean, we're not the first of it, but I feel like we're the be beginning of something really big. And I got all these other podcasts coming at me. Like acting like, you know, trying to start rap wars with me, rap beefs. Oh, you really? know? Is that happening? Oh, yeah. They, all these podcasts start coming up, popping up on people, and they don't realize this is what I do. You know, I'm dead on the inside. I kill hecklers, keep my teeth white. That's what I do, okay? And these guys pop off on me. You're like, dude, if Tim Foyle hats Eminem, you're a SoundCloud rapper, okay? <laughs> Check yourself. Fucking Nick Cannon. I'm so tired of these troll, so, troll holstros going on here. People trolling just to get viewers. And, you know, it's, I'm, I'm sure it works a little bit. But then you end up, like, fucking crashing and burning because no one likes an asshole. just shits on everybody. I don't know. I don't know if you heard about that little kid, uh, that 6'9". He's the biggest asshole. He's trolling the world, and he's getting so much fucking fame. He's got, like, I think, he had 2 million people watching him on his live at, live at one time. Is that that Asian guy? No, that's the guy with the rainbow hair. Oh, Takashi? Yeah, he's out now. He's back? He's back. New song and everything. And, like, some people are like, yeah, he's back from where he was, like, when he got accused of molesting children and snitching on everybody. Yay! <laughs> I'm glad that got taken care of, and now he can get back to listening to his overdub music. <laughs> Listen, dude. <laughs> dude, if there's any part of this that's hard, it's knowing that I am trying to save the retarded. <laughs> You know, I feel like I'm trying to save the retarded and nobody appreciates it. Guys, uh, if you love that witty commentary, you know, you can thank our good friends at Manscaped, everybody. That's right, Manscaped. Guys, aren't you tired of nicking your nuts? It's, I mean, dude, it's the worst. There's nothing worse than, you know, it's worse than believing in the uh, corona epidemic is dying of a nut nick during the uh, corona epidemic. Imagine that. Imagine if you nicked your nuts, you went to the hospital and died, and they said you died of corona. That's just ridiculous, okay? But not anymore, thanks to Manscaped. Manscaped is the only men's brand dedicated to the below-the-waist grooming and hygiene. You're probably spending more time than ever with your significant other. Oh, yeah, dude, all the time. And let me tell you something. If you don't keep it down, keep it clean down there your partner will notice trust me man she feels like she's doing a safari every time she has to, she's hooking up with an armenian she's like in raiders of the lost ark she's just whacking vines trying to find the treasure you know what i'm saying and by the way bill get a bill uh, uh bill mars getting in trouble talking about his big dong i got six inches i can't stop shutting up about it Okay, and I need all six of those inches. Okay, and thanks to Manscaped, I now have the full six inches. Our guest is looking in for I know. Okay. <laughs> Guys, I love this. Tell a funny st manscaping story. I clean my nuts, and my girlfriend thinks I got bigger junk. How about that one? How's that for a good one? 
Guys, you guys have to use the Manscaped, <laughs> Manscaped 3.0 Essential Tools, okay? The perfect package 3.0 kit comes with the new and improved lawnmower, 3.0 waterproofing, <laughs> cordless body trimmer, and tons of liquid for formulations to help round out your manscaping routine. I love it. I love it, man. It looks good. The thing just, just shines, dude. Just shines. This looks like an Academy Award when I'm done with it. The third generation twi trimmer features the cutting edge blade that prevents manscaping accidents. Millions of balls are about to be nick, nick free. That's my baby crying. You came from these balls, baby. Thanks to Manscaped's advanced skin safe technology. God, they're the best. Thank you. Subscribers get the new replacement blade for your lawnmower trimmer delivered to your door every three months, making your super, making sure your trimmer always stays fresh and clean. Okay. And for a limited time, our, our listeners get not one, but two free gifts, the shed travel package value to $39, $39 and the patented high performance anti-chafing Manscaped bo boxing briefs, dude. You can you can patent underwear, dude. What? Yeah. <laughs> that means someone patented that yeah. elephant underwear you saw at uh, in the mall when you went to. Nope, nobody knows what I'm talking. Well, about. you're talking about it's like Spencer gifts where the yeah, the, your someone patent the elephant trunk. Yeah, the yeah, elephant yeah. trunk. You tried someone that owns on? that. Yeah. You someone made that on? big money. Your Some yeah. chick, chick, your six inch stick went in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It did. And it looked like half a trunk, okay? <laughs> this More is like the perfect anger. package for your perfect package. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code TINFALL at Manscaped, okay? 20% off and free shipping with the code TINFALL at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at Manscaped.com. Use the promo code TINFALL hat, okay? Do it now. All right, guys. This is an interesting show today. As you guys know, I've been wanting to do shows on a couple things. The first one was uh, I wanted to do show on uh, who Hitler really was. And we were nice enough. And we had the guys from Edge of Wonder on. And yeah. we put the show on. And YouTube erased it. So we knew we were on something. <laughs> okay. And the other one I wanted to do on the Pissar family or Pesar family. Uh, I wanted to get into that because, you know, Q's dropped about that and all that information. So I had some, I was in a, uh, oh yeah, when they were accusing me of being anti-Semitic. You guys remember that? When I was, when I was talking about how I love uh, how Jewish chicks are number two on my super freak big board. And I've uh, pleasured myself to uh, Israeli soldier twerking videos. You remember that anti-Semitism when I was talking about that? I love how nobody talks about that. Johnny knows about it because it yep. haunts his nightmares. Oh, yep. Those guys are yep. hot, though. I don't blame you. Those girls are hot. Armenian chicks. They're, they are hot. They're smoke oh, yeah. shows. Kosher chicks are great, man. But uh, one person came to defend me out of nowhere, and she started talking about the Pissars. So she knew how to get my attention. Please welcome to the show, Mel Krell. How are you, Mel? I'm doing great. How are you? Mel, I'm tell us a little bit. <laughs> I love you very much. I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you being part Jewish, coming and defending me when people are just saying dumb stuff, taking stuff out of um, context. That was a debate show. And I even am. though I like Adam Green, I think he's a nice guy. I think he was stating stuff right out of Tal Talmud, okay? Yeah, uh, it was so the big show. Educated and uh, not doing any research. Okay, Very I would love to have mind. a debate between you two. We could. I need to do more debate shows. Yeah, yeah, I, it would be quite the debate. I was yelling I at the that. screen. Okay, I love that. But the problem <laughs> is, if we did have a debate, no one would listen to it. They would just no. hear one That's clip that Adam said, and they would try to tarnish all of us as hating people. This is a simple show, man. I'm a well written multi-layered dick joke comic who loves yeah, people okay no, i don't no. ever come outside of male feminists okay there's nobody that i will no group i will ever 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 hate them and uh child molesters those are the groups that i will 100 percent hate okay yeah. i'm all about love but you i want you to tell us a little bit about you how you got into this whole movement and right. you know we've talked a little bit and i can tell you're very passionate about it and I'm super excited to have you on. So tell them how you kind of got into the, the free thinker society. 
Okay. Well, I've always been a free thinker. I grew up with a bunch of free thinkers. But uh, um, Thanksgiving 2017, I, I, my parents are in Palm Beach, and uh, I'm sitting talking to this 90-year-old retired uh, judge, and he asked me if I knew anything about the QMAP. And I said, no, what are you talking about? And he said, go check it out. Talk to me tomorrow. And uh, that was the beginning. And I started reading it and getting it. And from everything I already knew and researched, I already understood it. Uh, I've always been a big history fan trying to figure out how the Holocaust actually happened and why. So, you know, I like codes. I like things like that. And then uh, as time went on and they, I was in LA for uh, 14 years. And as soon as the Epstein stuff dropped, uh, my head exploded. I couldn't believe how many people, not only that I worked for, but that I dated, that were on that island on that crazy weekend that we know from the calendar is a satanic ritual weekend, which we know what goes on there. But I started getting really freaked out at how close I've been to true evil all these years without knowing it. Uh, kind of like that that um, stunt guy in the, in the, the movie Out of yeah, Shadows. Yeah, in the, uh, in the uh, Out of the Shadows, you know? Right. It's, yeah. It so is I'm crazy, sitting, man. It's crazy. I know. I know. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, oh my, God, how, how is this possible? I didn't know. And then you start putting things together and it's like, oh, I remember that trip I wasn't invited on. And I remember that. They're not going to invite well, you know, me. Real quick, the, the, the key to keeping a satanic pedophile <laughs> network you know, they call them s secret societies for a reason. They're, right. they're secret. They don't yes. tell you. That's, they that's my biggest problem with everybody in the community is right. they don't understand that, like, no matter where you go in Hollywood, there's some dark art shit. Dude, you can go to a Taco Bell down the street and they'll tell you, like, somebody that worked there ended up, like, I mean, like, dude, literally, they had, like, a, there was, I forget where it was in Texas, but, like, this chicken store, this chicken restaurant had like underground railroads. To I know, I saw like, that. Kentucky Fried just, Chicken like, was closed. People just don't get like what part of secret society they right. don't understand. Right. They just don't get it. And so I that's why you didn't know because they don't tell you. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of stuff up in Laurel Canyon. I lived up there. It's really fucked up. I mean, I got I'm something sorry. to ask you. Sorry, Tumpy, I got something to ask you. You said that uh, you didn't get invited. Is there something you think you did that got you not to invite it? Like, did they- Yeah, I think they knew that I would, I would never, I would say something. I think they, <laughs> I mean, it was my boss and, uh, and I saw her on the list. They knew that I would be like, what the fuck are you? There's no way I would have gone along with any of it. I also don't get like crazy drunk and high and do whatever the hell they do with the with the blood like it's they just i wasn't somebody that they knew that my moral compass was uh not gonna go away because i was on an island hidden from uh sight <laughs> but um, I mean, dude i hear very famous stories of uh you know epstein after his conviction is having like lunches with a bunch of new york city comedians and uh i didn't ask who it was i mean you know who it is it's a, it's a, it's, it's a weird <laughs> shit thing, man. It's like a but very selling weird. selling their souls for fame instead of using their talent and, and, you know, wherewithal it to earn it. Does, you know, it just <laughs> doesn't interest me. It, uh, like, I like, I just, like, I'm very happy. If I could get the Tim Fall Hat shows to a hundred more people, which is about 300, 350 show, I'm good, dude. Right. I, I'm good. I, I, I like, dude, the notion, like, have to be huge and do, I uh, just... It just, uh, but who cares anymore? Who I cares don't. at this point? I mean, it's totally over. But you know what? This started when I was there in, uh, you know, the whole like when the gay mafia stuff came out and it was so, oh, all the LGBT were so offended. And, but it really did happen. It really did happen that uh, talent and, you know, earning it and working meant nothing. Diversity became what mattered, not talent or art. Oh, yeah. Or we we see Jeff Bezos saying that he wants his uh, workforce to be diverse, that way they never unionize, which well, is, you know, and now we're, now, now this video comes out and I'm going to do a, a Patreon on it uh, tomorrow with uh, Binky from the Propaganda Report. And we're going to break down that video of that young man getting shot. And, you know, I hate, I, like, dude, I mean, there should be a trial. Okay. But now we're starting to find out there's more to the story. And, and listen, dude, nobody need, should ever, have the right to gun down somebody in the middle of the street. It, 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 
there was a lot more to it and it was done purposefully to get us all to fight with each other. Right. And that's what it's like diversity. That's our greatest thing. You live in New York. I live in LA. We, you could go, we could jump in a, 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 a taxi or Uber that's driven by an Armenian, go to a nightclub, listen to urban music. Okay. Jump in another taxi, go to a fucking taco shop, you know, and, and with our aging girlfriend, right. It's just like, the diversity is the best part, but it's weaponized. Right. And right. I mean, this is the same thing that happened with Trayvon. If anyone goes back and revisits it, there's a $100 million lawsuit by the guy who's defending, uh, who's prosecuting for the kid, um, that kid that like, they attacked. I don't remember his name, but uh, remember he was in D.C., and they said that he was like racist against the- uh, oh, yeah, that, that school and that Native American when yeah, that kid yeah. came up playing the, yeah. playing the yeah. drums. Yeah, that lawyer took on, uh, because now everything's come out with the Trayvon hoax book and movie. Okay, all right, okay, listen. No, we're going to get into that in another day, okay? They, another day. jumped on the same way. They said, oh, there's a tragedy. Let's exploit it and make it look like it was uh, racial when it really was. Well, the funniest part was that they were trying to make it white and black, and then right. it's like, dude, Zimmerman's Latino. <laughs> and they're like, I remember telling that to someone. I go, Zimmerman's a lot of I what? Doesn't matter. I'm like, it does matter. Exactly. It really does. Exactly. You know, it's like you're, you're saying a statement that's factually incorrect. And you see the guy, and he's like a little 5'7 little guy who, like, got his ass kicked and was defending his life. Whatever, that'll come out later. But the point is, as soon as there's a tragedy, good old Rahm Emanuel and his, uh, his brother cult. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this on. Obamagate is going to be huge yeah, and it's, it's not going huge. away but the interesting thing is how everybody are trying to like, make it go away they what? are trying to make it go away if you go on twitter obama gate literally has 1.15 million and trump gate has not even a quarter of that and it's trending higher they're yeah I, I, dude and it's Bullshit. so obvious here's their only hope they're going to shut down the internet at some point right. it's something's going to happen but our own our only hope is that data is king so who no, knows no, what's going to happen hope. Our only hope is us at this point. I don't, I, I can't even, I don't even watch Fox News. I, I don't, I can't, I can't. I only watch people like you and 10 other people that I think are great. And that's you all. You know I what's so interesting is uh, we're seeing them people talk about this is the greatest presidential scandal of all time. And I'm like, you know, there was a president that was associated with two different assassination attempts on two different presidents, right? You know no, that, no. right? He, you know that guy flooded the like as as head of the uh, CIA, flooded this country with crack cocaine. You know right. that, right? You and know heroin, his son, from heroin too. Heroin. Yeah, you know, I mean, like, you know that there was a guy called Woodrow Wilson who like <laughs> brought in the Federal Reserve in like a thief in the night on Christmas Eve. Like, well, I mean, this is a good segue to the Pesor family, is it not? I love it. I love it. The guest is like, okay, let's get back on track, Sam. Let's get back on track. Uh, so, so, uh, yes, let's get no, it. No, because what you saying right okay? now is very important to the yeah, case. Yeah, you're good, Sam. Yeah. Okay. So, so I've been wanting to do a, 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 a Pesar episode for a while, ever since Q dropped the P, and that sent me down this yeah. rabbit hole. And yeah. what's very interesting is how hard it is to find information on this family we and i'll tell you it's almost like the black nobility good luck finding exactly any like information on either i mean like dude it's so hard to find and it took forever to get anybody to come on and talk black nobility and it's taken forever to get anybody to talk uh, is it pay do you think that is you think that's fear you think it's fear i think I mean, it's just uh, what we're seeing with um it is hard to find i i did so much digging like all the way back to like books from the 1700s yeah, right? I got it's impossible it. because i couldn't it's, believe it's, what i was reading it's it's 1984 it is the uh it is the department of propaganda they go back and they just wipe out things like f go, find me any article that actually talks about when the NYPD chief talked about what he saw on on Anthony Weiner's laptop, it's you can't find it. Gone. You can't Gone. find it anywhere. It has it's been gone. wiped off, and I know I read it. 
when it was coming out. I read it. It was like the Eric Prince. Real. Eric Prince came out. You remember Eric Prince came out? And yeah. he's the one. It was like the only other voice being like, and now Sidney Powell. Powell is always, where is that laptop anyway? This is totally crazy. Well, Anyone that happened, that laptop well you know, here's the whole thing, how you know that story's real. And we'll right. get back. So no. <laughs> is it Pesar or Pesar? I call it Pesar, but okay. it doesn't really matter. The, the, this is how you know it's real. Is because why would Comey open up the investigation that close to Hillary doing a victory lap? Because he had no choice. Because he had no choice. Because the, the New York PD made him do it. Now, right. and now how many of those guys that are involved with that are dead? Like uh, uh, nine, nine of 12, but are they dead? I don't know. I read the Q uh, death pages a little uh, suspicious that some of those people are not dead. I hope not. I hope Cappy's not dead, but I, I hope a lot of the other ones are. And I don't, I can't imagine that all those cops killed. I mean, they didn't kill. I, I, I just, I hope some of them are in witness protection. It doesn't make any sense. How's it possible? I, I, I hope you are true, but it does. I mean, like the one police chief had a month till retirement and he offs himself. Come on. How about the Shermans? It was a murder-suicide. Now we find out it was a straight-up murder. And well, yeah, created, uh, but that's an interesting Florida, because Florida we talked about this before. They were involved in Haiti. And everybody involved in Haiti, a lot of them are dead. A lot of them are well, dead. Well, yeah, a lot of the whistleblowers are dead. Remember that guy came to talk to Trump a few weeks later? Dead. You know, yeah. um, uh, so, so let's get, get into the it. pay stars. Who are they? Okay. So through all my research and, you know, I, I like David Icke and all these people, Mark Dice, I, you know, I went through their stuff. I went through a lot of records and basically uh, this is my opinion. Anyone can dig for themselves. I don't want to get attacked, but this is my opinion of, from everything I've read, which is a lot. And like you said, it's very hard to find. Um, anyway, uh, Daniel Paysor is really the son of Marie Antoinette and Louis the 16th. Is it Louis the 16th? Okay. And um, anyway, when they had their heads chopped off. In yeah, this is back when the elites had to pay a price, which was a very interesting time because, you know, the things started changing right around that. And if you even go all the way to Mussolini, when they hung Mussolini, that's it. The elites go, whoa. Hey, this hey, is like, we could lose our heads. Source. It's going to connect to the pay source. Oh, shit. Ready? So what you're talking about is here's what happened. So the rumor, I think it's true, is that the child was two years old. He was the heir apparent. See, uh, LC would be King Louis, right? And uh, anyway, the story as it goes is that King George, who was in bed with the financial side of the Illuminati, or whatever you want to call them. I hate calling them that because it's put off putting. But anyway, he um he took the two year old child from prison and exchanged it with a different child who was deaf and mute. Okay. And that child was in England and then sent to given stock in Virginia company. His name okay, was Okay, so real quick we jumped over a lot of stuff here. So this this son named David, right? He's under house arrest by no, the Freemasons. Lewis. Lewis. What? Lewis. He said Lewis. Oh, the son name. was the next King Louis. Okay, so his name there. was Louis, and they changed his name? Okay, yeah. so Louis is under house arrest by the Freemasons. Right. They slip out his brother, which sounds shady as shit. I to know, me. I know. I can't find anything on the brother. You know, but the brother was supposedly mentally handicapped or something yeah. along the lines of that. They switch him out. Uh, they get him to England where he's under uh, uh, royal protection. King George, yeah. King George. Uh, when he turns, what, 19? They yes. decide to send him to America, right? And he basically went there with what the equivalent he of like fifty million dollars. Well, he uh, King George gave him a ship, uh, eight hundred acres of land, and he went with a guy whose last name was Paysor. They changed his name to Bayshore, and they sent him over as Daniel Paysor. So they come over at to Virginia and they start buying up land and building the railroads with that that's money. how it starts man they decided they got to start uh building a railroads and you know like the railroads because like then they people, own the land 
I mean, people, I mean, like it was, it was the, you know, the flying of that day. The people couldn't fly back then. So right. they, the, everybody was using the rail system. Right. And, that's and think Brooklyn. about this. We didn't have highways until <laughs> right. much later. Right. So everybody was traveling through. Right. Just think about that, man. We didn't have highways. No. And these people cornered the market in transportation of goods and services. Remember, originally it was, um, it, so this is the Virginia company. Originally, railroads were wood, but then guess who starts the first big steel company? The Paysor, uh, Daniel Paysor. Now, um, what happens then? What else does he start? He starts the first fertilizer company. He owns all the big Lancaster cotton. Oh, yeah, there's a so list the of mills. like everything that the, uh, that the Paysor family owns. Right, now, now their name is, is Pesor, but a lot of people there knew. And, and this, um, anyway, so the, the old elder Pesor dies, okay? But he has three daughters and they get, they split it up. Now, Daniel uh, Pesor leaves everything. One son of his died, Adam, and the other one, um, apparently, Louis Cass Pesor is the one that really built the entire railroad system, the entire um, cotton uh, fertilizer. They bought lots of forests and they also made it that they own 15 miles north and south or east and west of the railroad tracks that they had. So then you go into the next phase of their, of their first of all, you have to remember this is the French monarchy. These aren't Americans. These yeah, aren't Americans. People don't realize that, that, dude. It's the French, the French monarchy. royal family. Right, exactly. That's how they had unlimited money and resources and knowledge and ability. And, okay. and the, you, you combine that with right. the British royal family. Right. Well, that's going to come to the, uh, well, a lot of people don't know that DC is a corporation, just like the Vatican is a corporation, just like the city of London is a corporation. Which is they my have nothing to do with that the the, we're just Jesuit. These are all, and I include Israel into this. I do Jesuit, too, but... Israel's a weird, I'll, I'll get there because my big thing with you was I was saying, you know, the misconception is about the Rothschilds is, is very, we, people bought into a total con when it comes to anti-Semitism and those people. So we'll get into that because I know what you're talking about. Yeah. We'll get into that. So all but it's my belief that like, the, I, I, I was told by somebody and if, you know, you tell me something, I'm going to assume it's real, um, is that the... Uh, the Vatican owns like 60% of Israel, somebody was telling me. Well, like a huge who, owns chunk. The Vatican? who owns the Vatican? That's the Rothschilds the own the Vatican. They bought the Vatican. Well, hold on, hold on. I, I believe the Vatican. 1832, the Rothschilds bought the Vatican. Well, I, I, you know, so, so that's, a, that's a contention that uh, Adam Green was talking about, about well, who controls the Vatican. The but it is well, my it, belief it, that it is even beyond that, that black nobility above that. And that, you know, the Rothschilds are just an extension of another, of, the, of well, what we're seeing right here is that they, these guys rebrand themselves. So, right. so it's like Rothschilds are only, uh, I forget the name of the, uh, uh, the, the, one of the 13 blood, blood right. lines, which goes back to what I'm saying is that, right. you know, and we'll get into that part. I know you want to talk about, but. It's much, it's much greater than who runs. I just think the Vatican is Rome, and Rome was Egypt, and it Egypt is, it was uh, uh, the city and of uh, Atlantis. Well, the Merchant of Venice, don't forget. That's where all banking started. This loan and debt meant, like, hell we live in that's all based on debt and interest is, is a farce. It's a farce. Anyway, back to, uh, so Rothschild is, really means, first of all, it's a made-up name. It means Red Shield, Okay. Oh yeah, so the world. which so, is interesting yeah. because if you take a look at uh, the, the Red Cross, right? right? Wow, they own that too. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> okay, so the Pesors give the um, the kid, the daughters, the the father, Louis Cass Pesor, his attorney and everything was this guy Leroy Springs, who was also one of the thirteen or twelve families, thirteen being the Pesors. And he really, he's a Rothschild, Springs is a name, it was Springsteen, they came over, they were given land in New Jersey and New York. Well, this guy takes over the entire Pace, uh, Lewis Cass Pace or Trust. At this point, they're playing around with 
um, hiding companies like they do now. Like if you look at Nexium or Epstein, they have their parent company or trust and then like 200 companies underneath that run by different trustees that we think are the CEOs and they're not. They're just trustees. The owner to this day of all of these corporations is still the original owners, which are descendants of the French monarchy. <laughs> I'm going to add a link to this page I found. It's called reignsofheaven.org. And they just list all of the I know, holdings. I saw it. It's it is crazy. like every rail company they basically own, no every idea. one of them. Um, Exxon, Standard Oil, GM. I mean, it's nuts, but people don't know. And, and this is really where the, the real- The Bank of Health comes. Springs, the Bank of Charleston. I mean, all these banks they own. Uh, oh. First National Bank. Uh, it's just like the- I mean, bank of and they have a monopoly on our uh, energy. They own the entire energy grid, PG&E. Remember the fires in California? Who owns PG&E? The same parent company. So this is from my research. But the, the point is that, so the, the Pesor Trust is an irre irrevocable trust, and it was done under some maritime law, not our law of America. So our government cannot audit it. So... They, because of this crazy trust that they did, and it was a forever trust. But then a lot of the leases for the railroads were 99 year trusts, which then expired in 1993, conveniently while George Bush Sr. was in office. And George Bush Sr. changed the entire Cass, Lewis Cass Pesor Trust into a new company called Seed, C E D E, and Company. C E D E and Company owns America. Okay, and um, I'm sure you know that the How do you Fed, spell that? C E D E and company. Wow. Okay, so the so the, it's all the same people. Okay, it's all the, this is the craziest part is you go through it and it's all the same people. And okay, so real quick them. before you can move on, they own here's some miscellaneous companies that they own. Okay, Standard Oil, Exxon, right? Yeah, holy crap. Yeah. They own our entire grid, which is, I think, why Trump put in the executive order about the grid last week. It's getting, it's getting hot, you know? And, um, but here's the thing about them. Guess who else they own? They own the Federal Reserve, okay? Uh, we that that is crazy. They own no the Federal Reserve. Yes, yes. And they are the only um, true, because anyone that trades an IPO or whatever, they know they have to sign a contract. Well, it's a really long contract that has lots of conflicting stuff on it. But at the end of the day, everything, including mortgages, goes right back to them. So this is, and this is still this trust that nobody can investigate. Okay. Now, now President Jackson tried, and it's the same people just now. And you know, they intermarry. They don't. They don't. Leave they own General anymore. Motors. Not everything. You don't. It's crazy. Cadillac. Like, yeah. But aren't we all told that certain people, CEOs, chairmen, they're not- General they Electric. They don't have any power, the people that run these companies. It's all run by this trust. And then they, they spread out these companies. So anyway, George Bush uh, Sr., after the 99-year leases ended for the railroads and the banks and everything, started this seed um, and company, which is the only company that really owns anything on the New York Stock Exchange. Okay, and they have the uh, DTC and DTCC, and these are deposit companies that are the only people that can deposit or withdraw from the, uh, from the stock exchange. According so, to this, the Charleston, Cincinnati, Chicago Railroad Company is the Federal Reserve. Right, owned by the, the Pesar Pesar Trust. Yeah. Holy shit, dude. Yeah. So here's here's the real real screwing us. And and it's not just us. These are banks, they have banks all over the world that they control, 184 banks. Um, but here's the truth is that um they own every all it's like type A stock, it's called on the stock exchange. And it's that's the owners, and those are the voters. Only they say like 5% of ownership in these companies is traded on the stock exchange. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look at this. LCBR owns nine-tenths of all preferred shares 
share issue of each of these 45,000 and the rest of the world owns 5,000 shares of issued stock. That's it. And remember, they also own the Federal Reserve Bank. Okay. So where do we pay our taxes? To the Federal Reserve Bank, not to the America. So we, we put, you know, we donate, we pay our taxes. We think it's going to help the homeless in America. It's going to, you know, feed, to feed this person. It's going to clean up this, that. None of our money is going anywhere but to the private bank of the Federal Reserve. Now, the thing that happens is because of, they control our debt, no matter how much money we pay in taxes, there's, there's like trillions of dollars in the Federal Reserve. We're never, ever, ever going to pay off that debt, and they know that. So everything that we put into our, every tax that they take and give to the Federal Reserve is going towards interest on our national debt. None of it is going back to the people. None of it, okay? So then the other thing is, um, if you connect all this, they've also um, gotten to a point where, uh, the last three presidents played along, they were involved, and they started setting up foundations, as you know, the Rockefellers, the, uh, the Rockefeller Foundation. Real Alex quick, Carter. before we get into that, I want to say something. So there is a notion that um, the Rockefellers and even the Rothschilds are just basically desk jockeys for the Passar family. Exactly. And that they do, they basically prop, in particular, the Rockefellers, right? Prop them up, right? To, so that they and become why? the face of something that they now you got to understand something about these Pissars. The, the truth, the, the, the belief is that they have children and right. they don't even register them, right. there's no registry of them, there's no right. actual evidence of a, a public record of these people existing right why, this why is would where you do it gets that complex because uh you know now we get into the satanic illuminati side of why stuff. would you do that xg is, yeah um, is it so that you can't trace them because i so you yeah. can't trace them you don't know who they are because they don't want anyone to know right. i mean i'm 47 years old i just found out about the Pissar family in 2019 right because Q, remember CIA dropped that, uh, the bloodlines of the Illuminati until the CIA dropped it on their site about a year ago. I always thought like, yeah, whatever, whatever, you know. And then that was for us to do some digging. They can't tell us everything, you know, so that's when I started. But um, basically the thought in the 13 council, which is the 13 families, 12 families with the Pesors at the top, they believe that the Pesor bloodline is the bloodline of, um, from the Garden of Eden of Eve and the serpent, okay? So, so Eve, so Eve, you know, it, it's always been my thought that, you know, Eve was get, hitting it on the side. Well, that's their thought too. Of course, it sounds disgusting, but anyway. The, the, Is that how we get the, lizard people? Half human, I, half- I can't even go there without, that's like one <laughs> level too far, but yeah. <laughs> so basically, um, so, so and, and like, you know, Neon Revolt had a good article on this. It's really, it doesn't matter if we believe it. We obviously think it's ludicrous, but they do. And that's the problem. So anyway, the Pesors at the top of the Illuminati chain, according to all this stuff, because they're believed to be the true uh, descendants of Satan and Eve. So they, they are supposed to be the people that create the Antichrist. These hoes ain't loyal. No. So... <laughs> So anyway, but also then you think about it, Adam and Eve had two kids, Cain killed Abel. The Rothschilds and the Rockefellers are Canaanites. There were tribes, it goes all the way to there. There were tribes in Israel. The Canaanites hate God. They feel like God sent the serpent slash Lucifer, Satan, Moloch, whatever you want to call him, out of the Garden of Eden because of what happened. Well, they hate God and, and their whole religion is based on um, destroying God and God's people. And it, it ties in today, crazy enough. But so the Pacers are the special people because they are supposed to be the one bloodline that will produce the Antichrist that will then bring up ap the apocalypse. And then they can live their Georgia Guidestone life. You know, they, they <laughs> then, then the Georgia Guidestones become important. So uh, basically it doesn't matter if we don't believe it. Uh, I, you know, 
it, there's so much evidence. And if it's on the CIA side and it's here, there and everywhere, and it only came out now, it has something to do with Trump because they, they needed to get somebody in there like Trump that was an outsider that didn't care because all these other people are related. Uh, the Bushes are related. <laughs> the, they have bloodlines of, uh, that they say, you know, Lincoln and um, Clinton and all these, they can trace them back to different families. They all intermarry because, not just because of money, but because they believe that their bloodlines are superior to ours. So I couldn't uh, agree more. And, you know, here's the whole thing, dude. Uh, Kennedy's are bloodlines. Right. You know, I they say JFK that, that Lincoln is rogue. a Rothschild. Yeah, uh, but I think JFK Jr. went rogue, and that's why they killed him. He was, because so is Onassis, you know? And then, um, not JFK Jr., JFK Sr. and his brother didn't want to go. They wanted to give the power back to the people, and they were murdered. You know, and then uh, the truth is, um, some of these people, like Abraham Lincoln, is is a Rothschild, but his father. But the truth is, he didn't believe in it. You have a choice. You always have free will because God gave you free will. But if you grow up believing that God is the problem and Satan is the answer, you know, then that's what you believe. And uh, you know, they say, "Oh, money's the root of all evil." No, love of money is the root of all evil. I, I believe that uh, when we're talking Satanism, we're talking Saturn worship. Yeah. Uh, Satanism, in my humble opinion, is a psyop that was created to take the best of uh, what is like ancient knowledge or, hin you know, Hinduism okay. is like the oldest of the religions. And, the, you know, and the whole idea is possibly we live in a realm and there's immortal gods and mortal gods and we're here to learn lessons so that we can transcend to mortal gods and what they did is they took the best of that religion and they took the worst right. of uh, their religion and right. they put them together so nobody would ever look at them and there's right. only one reference to us uh, uh lucifer in the bible and it's about him coming falling from the sky right. and and they took all that and they put it into something and then we see you know, uh, they turned it you know, there's down. Aleister Crowley, Black Magic, and then there's uh, what's his name, the bald I, guy uh, that started Satanism. What's his? What, Anton, uh, I know. Um, Anton Levay. Right, right. Anton um, Levay. It's it's so obvious a psyop. It's so obvious that it, right. it's just a, it's a, it's like you know what Satanism is, dude. It's just beta cuck anarchists who are just like lazy. They're just I I and they just want to do their Dungeons and Dragons bullshit. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but it gets dangerous because they actually believe that they're superior to humanity. They don't consider themselves the same as you and That's I. That's what I'm saying, dude. Themselves. Saturnists are, are this level of people and they believe in doing all this dark art stuff. And then right. Satanists are just like, ah, oh, yeah, look at us. We're going to go listen to The Cure. And we're going to put <laughs> spells on people. I'm going to put a spell on the, the jock that banged my girlfriend in high school. You know, they're just dorks, dude. And I'm, well, that's the thing about all these people. Look at the dude from Nexium. Who in God's name would follow that guy? You know. And I, I almost, I almost tripped and fell into Scientology on the. On, yeah, everyone does in L.A. at some point. Oh, You're, I <laughs> never did. No, you know, I knew that yeah, was yeah, yeah. You were crazy down, out you were the down gate. In Beachwood Canyon, and you didn't know you were talking to one of them, and suddenly you're invited to the Celebrity Center. For Nobody Britain. invited me. To, I, I think they instantly I knew it was that. never going to happen. Look out well. <laughs> my dad used to have a Scientology book, and I was like, what the hell is this crap? A Dianetics? Yeah. Yeah, Dianetics. And I'm like, what are you forget, reading? Scientology. L. L. Ron Hubbard was a sci-fi writer, but he also, he was obsessed with Aleister Crowley. So what's Well, Aleister Crowley actually called uh, Jack Parsons, says, hey, dude, get away from L. Ron Hubbard. You know, if, uh, if uh -huh, Aleister Crowley's saying you're shady. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. But um, yeah, so, but anyway, at this very top level, they all do this satanic stuff. But like you're saying, is it to control them? It, you know what I mean? Rather than- Well, it's like you said, if they, it, it doesn't matter out. if it's real or not, they believe it. It's like, right. my, my, my opinion on, on Q is that the information's real. But right. what it represents, I don't know. We're seeing as it fold out. Right. We only know right. much down the line. But right. there is enough people that believe in this thing that now it is true. It's, it's really happening. So, I mean, whoever's also, putting it out, I don't know. Yeah. But I also think it gets away from them after, after a moment that it, it takes itself. It becomes 
Frankenstein's monster. You know, it's like, yeah, right, totally. Dr. Frankenstein's created him, but at some right. point he realized he couldn't control it anymore. Right, and that's exactly. the internet to me. Right. But, but the internet, good and bad, it's also the only reason we know about the Illuminati or the Pacers well, or anything. That, yeah, it's like, we would it, never it, know. it's kind of what they said, uh, what we had a guest say before. It's like the internet allowed us to get the, uh, the knowledge of the elites. Right. Exactly. That we could never get before. And what's so far, you know, and, the, and so anyway, they say that these, all these families that are in the 13 families, they only intermarry, by the way. They don't marry outside. Remember I told you I dated somebody in the Illuminati and I was like, well, now I know. I didn't then. And he told me that his marriage was arranged. And we were, I was like 19. He was like in his 20s in New York. And I'm like, what do you he mean? He's married? He, he had, yeah, but he had an arranged marriage. And I didn't put it together until years later that they're both offspring of these families. So you're so, like a side chick? Well, no, nah, yeah, maybe. Um, I was. <laughs> no, I didn't know that he had a fiance or anything. And then uh, this is so crazy. And then one day we're talking, and he said he was getting married on Saturday. And I'm like, I worked with him, but like, I, I thank God, and it was it was early in the game, so I didn't get sucked in. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah. You know, Amer and he told me who it was and that she lives in France and she was coming over and they were getting married and that was that. Did you ever meet her or she probably handled yeah, Johnny's her. girlfriend? No, I know her. She, <laughs> she's in LA. She might be. She, they're divorced now. She, but uh, yeah, that was a marriage to keep it in the family. But, yeah, that's uh, to keep their bloodlines and, you know, and I, I think lizard people are just bad in the sack too and they don't want anybody to know. They got no rhythm. <laughs> well, well, when the when the thing came out about uh, uh, Harvey Weinstein's uh, uh, genitals, I was like, look, that was so horrifying. Can you imagine what oh, what, imagine. what crazy satanic uh, a twisting was that about? You know. <laughs> so a big thing about the this these pay, the Pissar family is they that they have so them. many companies, and the and and the belief is that the CFR is simply. Uh, their trust right. where all the people from all these that run all these companies get right. together and right. decide what's going to happen with the world because right. they own so much of I the say, world right i say uh i say that there's a correlation between the resignation list in q and the cfr now this is this is more recent work of mine but every every company in the cfr is connected to a piece or owned company okay which we now call seed and, and company but um Okay, so here's the other thing about so intra that's such a big revelation because for the longest time you couldn't find it. I know. <laughs> but no, we, we thought that these resignations had to do with I'm with like pedophilia or dark art stuff. And it does in a way, but I'm really starting to think this had more and to do of the American people. With this know? had more to do with uh they knew this this virus absolutely pa pandemic was coming absolutely. and half of them probably hate their job so they you know they quit earlier but i think they saw that the, the writing on the wall well also they're complicit in it because we've been told that if we're not globalists and we're not helping foreign countries that are starving even though many people in our own country are homeless and starving i'm in nyc where the hell's the money going i it's not going to the people that's for damn sure but uh so i you know now, if we want to go to the CFR, all of those companies can be connected back to companies in that trust. And then there's also the media, but they own them too. So the next thing is that the globalist thing is really about, you know, they tell you it's all for good. And if you read, you want to vomit if you read the, uh, the mission statement of any of these groups, the CFR, but, you know, World Health Organization, um, Trilateral Commission, they're all about that. These elites, these people that are involved in this corporation, uh, this, uh, you know, charity that brings them billions and billions and billions of dollars, God knows where it goes, they uh, are looking out for the good of humanity. It's the exact opposite, <laughs> you know. It's a, you oh, know. I'm starting to learn that, man. The more the media tells you somebody's a good guy, the more I realize they are a scum yes. bag. And I, right. And when I hear global or world or international in front of a foundation, I am pretty sure that it's connected to the same thing, which is about depopulation in my, my opinion, because if it you look at the Georgia crazy, Guidestones dude. and the original stuff, those Georgia Guidestones are, I believe, what those people believe, you know, deep down. And, and look, I'm not saying that they're all 
whatever. Their end goal has nothing to do with us. Okay, it has nothing to do with you or me or him or him or my parents, your parents, your kids. It's, they don't care about us. We don't matter. And, and this whole global thing, you know that the Fed can't be audited? We don't know. They, apparently, what number did I write down? They have like 1.8 quad, quadrillion dollars. Quadrillion dollars. We can't investigate the Fed because it's a private bank under a trust. These are crazy laws. And people have tried, but... You know, they almost killed Jackson. That's why uh, Trump has the picture of Jackson on his wall of all presidents. Because Jackson said that his, he had ended the Rothschild Bank. He said it was the most evil force in the world. And uh, then like you said, Woodrow Wilson was brought in by the CFR and the original CIA, which was called something else, which also the Pesos owned it. The Pesos owned it through their, uh, their security system that ran the military railroad is the original uh, CIA, okay? So then, you know, so now we're here, and right now the dilemma is, okay, so America's money has not been going back to us. That mortgage scandal, they don't care about us. They just took all our property back because we stupidly signed contracts thinking that it was our government that was giving us these mortgages, but it's not, it's not. <laughs> it's the corporation of the United States of America that is basically part of these same people. So the Federal Reserve is all about enriching themselves while we think that our, our tax money is not going to anything we think it's going to. It's going to debt. It's going to paying interest on our debt that we can never ever satisfy. And that's what I think it's been on the Q map about them being at the top. A, they're not known of. The, the reason that they all protect them is because their, their bloodline is supposed to produce the Antichrist, which then will be the apocalypse, which then will take the too. world population down to 500 million because it's easier to control 500 million than 7 billion. Okay. And, and I think we're there right now at the cusp because, you know, a lot of people don't realize these executive orders that uh, Trump has been doing are really about undermining the Fed. He's trying to, in my opinion, he's trying to bankrupt the Fed with, because he took the pandemic and turned it around on them. They knew it was coming because it's basically in that agenda 2030. Oh, the worst is the UN. And most people don't, which is connected to the CFR, but most people don't know that in 1999, I believe it's McCarthy put up a bill to pull us out of the UN and seize all their assets in America. And I think that would be a good start because, um, you know, the elite, like they call themselves the elite, but if you look more into like their goals and agendas, first of all, they're all the same. They're all aligned on the same page. And you know, what's really scary is a lot of the media is in the CFR. And so are a lot of college presidents. And so are a lot of, you know, if you look at their list of membership, it, it's unreal how much influence they have and power and they have the money. And like Rockefeller said, I think there was some quote where he said um, that if people think that I'm trying to do this to make a global one world, uh, order, which is the goal is to have a one central bank, central pol political body control the entire world and turn it now, into different now, continents. Now look at this, dude. Okay, so the Pesar family owns 95% of the Fortune 500 companies, <laughs> of 30 of the 500 Fortune 500 companies. Okay, now think about that. This is why I've always said that television is a giant scam. Okay. We never market. knew what ratings were. They had this Nielsen thing forever. Nobody knew who had a Nielsen box, and they would just send us the numbers. I mean, the Mindy Project was on television for what seemed like forever. I never met anybody that watched that show, and that's no disrespect to anybody on the show. Johnny, does your fake girlfriend watch it? Well, I would say I, I, I was a Nielsen person for a while. They, and the, how, yeah, I got, a, I got a letter in the mail saying, hey, do you want to do Nielsen? Uh, you want to be a Nielsen viewer? And they said, we'll send you 20 bucks. They sent me 20 bucks. I did it for a little while and then forgot about it. But yeah, I just had to fill So up. Johnny's Illuminati. We just found out. Illuminati confirmed. Is that how they get on the show? They need pawns. They need pawns. They need average so, pawns. So think yeah, about I this. Think what it is, yeah. We don't, they own... I heard they own most of all the 500 companies. That's what you I've heard. They do. Well, okay. my, my, yeah. number is, my number is 300 of the 500 is owned by this trust, this case or trust, which is now called. So think about this, right? You, you own the companies that own the networks. Okay, so you own all the networks. And now 
you own all the companies advertising on the network. Right. So and they just, all can align under one agenda. You're just moving money around. And that's why they don't give a shit about ratings. They're not making money and they're not losing money because they're just moving money. They're and that's why they money. can run shit into the ground because uh -oh. it doesn't matter. And it's going right. to get worse. I, yeah, go ahead. You go Isn't ahead. It? I was going to say, it's going to get worse. I don't know if you saw that. It, uh, on Business Insider, they got CVS and uh, Walgreens buying out m mom and pop's pharmacies right now. Well, yeah. Why? Well, I'm in New York City. Why the hell is uh, is Home Depot open? But the guy that we go to on the corner usually exactly. to like, buy nails and stuff is closed. It, like uh, My sister's a, an attorney, and she's saying there's going to be a lot of lawsuits from these small companies saying, why was Walmart open and we weren't? Why was what? What's the difference? Like you don't Sing trust the, the fuck American out of them, dude. But listen, it, it's it's they're all connected. Look at how much money these companies made by staying open. While you know a company that's traveled down a uh, in a family that's been like on First Avenue and Fifty uh, Seventh Street or wherever for a hundred years is now closed. I mean, we're walking down the street, we're looking in restaurants, everything's gone. Like they're not coming back. Oh, dude, there's and, some comedy uh, clubs that are thinking about shutting it down for good. Get out. And not coming back because it's just, I know that I just talked to somebody that said that the comedy cellar is just going to go down to that one room downstairs. My favorite, though. That's the greatest. I had so much fun as a kid down in that room. <laughs> I'd be okay. Okay. So let's get into this. You know, a lot of times, you know, this show has the uncomfortable conversations that people don't like to have. And I think it's very important to have talks about stuff that is going on. So, so one time, uh, I'd say about two years ago, there was, I forget, a senator or a congressman said that the Rothschilds control the weather. They're talking about DARPA and all that stuff. And instantly, the, uh, the smear machine went and they said, oh, uh, Senator says Jews control the weather. And that's not what he said no. at all. It's and that's how they get you to stop questioning everything. Right. That's what I told you earlier when we spoke. I said, in my opinion, um, the, uh, these, co these families that are Jewish, remember, they're run by a French family, okay, that nobody knows. But uh, they were never Jewish, <laughs> okay? Jews... Jewish people follow Judaism. Judaism is the reading of the Torah from beginning to end every year. From Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, the same exact five books of Moses, that's it, that's what you read, that's what you believe, okay? And that's Judaism, okay? And then the other side, there were 12 tribes. You don't know, it, it, it's, there's plenty of, this is history, even though our history, I'm sure, is really rewritten dramatically, but if you go into history, history, there were 12 tribes. Well, one of them was Stan, one of them was, you know, followed Cain and I and the Gnostic and or Gnostic and all that. But the Israelites and the, the descendants of Joseph and them, they follow the Torah. These people have nothing to do with the Torah. And besides that, they actually uh, created another book and it's Tom. called the, the yeah, it's called and this is the giveaway is the um what's it and called? Kabbalah. You know, yeah, a lot of people say Kabbalah the, is witchcraft. The, the, the oral history of the Babylonian. Whenever right. you see Babylonian, that right. is a direct reference Illuminati. to, to right. uh, the uh, dark arts black cube right. uh, worship. Babylonian oral history of the Talmud. Okay? That right. is That's what they are. So, you know, even me as a Jew, I, 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 saw, I can see through this. Look, the Rothschilds benefit, the entire Council of 13, Committee of 300, they benefited from both First and Second World War. And uh, as, uh, when somebody says criticizing Soros is anti-Semitic, I want to like jump over and strangle them. The man is not Jewish. He does not practice Judaism. None of them do. They all practice, like you said, the dark arts or, you know, there were, there's a, whatever the case may be, there were all these tribes and they spread out. Well, guess what? You know, that, that anti-Semitic elders of Zion? Well, there's really elders of Sion. S-I-O-N, which is Mount Herm Her Hermon in Lebanon. And these are people that actually think that they're descendants of Egypt, not of Israel. So, you know, it, it's so crazy and convoluted, but I believe that they've been, they created anti-Semitism as I believe the Muslim Brotherhood created Islamophobia to say, you can't criticize us or you're an anti-Semite. Well, 
uh, I know a lot of Jews that never accepted me, you know, and I, I'm, you know, I, I don't consider every Jew, you know, it's just like, as a Jew, it upsets me when, when Jewish people, uh, that so many Jewish people were at Epstein Island, are involved in this, are involved in that. But then I had to look underneath that and be like, what is going on here? And then only to find, they hate God. <laughs> they don't believe in the Torah or the New Testament. They don't believe in that. They don't believe in anything like that, but they've used it to their advantage, I believe all these years to say, just like I, I understood what Mel Gibson was saying. What he was saying was, he's saying Jewish. Like, I, I'd like this to be clarified because last week my, my evil uh, mayor here threatened the Jewish community within days of praising the Muslim community. And he said the Jewish community without saying, you know, he's talking about a handful of people in Williamsburg that I don't have anything in common with. You know, like when I go down to Fairfax, when I'm in LA, I, I don't, they don't think I'm Jewish. <laughs> like, to get off the train in Williamsburg, I, I ain't no Jew to them. You know, I'm below them to them. So what, it's like saying every, you know, every black dude is in a gang. <laughs> no, they're not. Yeah, you know? it's just ridiculous, dude. <laughs> right, but it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And, uh, but, uh, and Jews, Jews aren't bankers. Jews right. aren't bankers. Okay, <laughs> white people aren't racist. Black people aren't fucking criminals. Gays aren't pedophiles. These right. are like bread fucking terms that right. are done to get us all to fight here. with each other. Right, to confuse, to divide and conquer. Look, look. If you don't get to look at the real people, people, it's always the same people. Always oh. the same. All you have to do is put the UN, Trilateral Commission, CFR, World Health Organization, Gates Foundation, Rockefeller Foundation, Ford Foundation, all next to each other, and they're all the same members. <laughs> they're all the same members. I, say, I always say it's like 3,000 people on this planet think that they are so far superior to the rest of us that they should dictate how many people live on this planet, how we spend our monies, how we raise our kids, what we eat, where we can go, what we think. And the sad part is we've allowed them to hijack, uh, which happened in Germany too, we've allowed them to hijack our schools and our universities, which you know ended up having, now we have me, uh, all of us are in our 40s, but I, I would say that um, we have about two generations of kids that were taught not to think. Oh, you know, for sure, for sure, for and sure. And that's, that's the goal, was to teach them to accept that these higher, these higher moral values of the globalist before you, the one world order before you, the one monetary system before you. This is the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. It's like, what do you think the Declaration of Independence was about? It was that me, you, and, and all of our friends and family can raise their children the way they want. What, the point, what is the point of being on this planet if you can't, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is the last thing they want for us, you know? And, um, 100%. Yeah. And then they and guilt they, us into they being They get assholes. these terms, and well, they get us to, uh, to fight with each other, and you have, you know, and, uh, and what happens and is generations- money. I'm sorry, but then they have the gall to do this. You know, the day after Trump says we're not funding World Health Organization, and there's plenty of reasons to, it's through the CFR. If you go to the website, that's where you find them. The truth is, two days later, Lady Gaga and all the people on Epstein Island did a benefit where they had people like me and you, you guys, donating money. What, why do they need our money to, to help, you know, in the pandemic? We don't, none of us have any money because it, they have it. <laughs> yeah, it, it is just ultimately and ridiculous. So brainwashed that they think, oh, well, Trump, um, Trump is, is pulling out of the World Health Organization and this and that. Well, we got to raise money for them to keep them going. Well, he's the president. What, what do you mean you have? And then they have the gall to go do it so blatantly and then, and then brag about raising like $50 million for the pandemic from schmucks like me, you know? And, you know, it's just- It it's is just unbelievable. Sad. How many of these- you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I was really proud of all these comics. They did some shows and they raised money for comics in need. Uh, but right. these giant celebrities, Lady Gaga, who they, who she raised money for? World Health Organization. Yeah, and, exactly. And, the World and, Health and Organization also, that's been taking money from Bill Gates and the uh, Communist Party. Now, I want to get into something real quick. Before you get there, you know who, uh, who's not paying taxes and got a stimulus check? Who? Churches, churches, right, and trusts. all got money. Churches. And trusts, 
Right. And, and trusts dude, and I foundations. Mean, like, just all these think stuff. about this, dude. If we go back to my whole theory that's all Jesuits, okay, and they create this law which states that churches don't have to pay taxes. I mean, how brilliant is that? Or I mean, be audited. Why, <laughs> yeah. Why, 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 why have an army everywhere when I mean, you could just open franchises and call them churches and uh, basically run everything from there? Well, that happens a lot in a lot of America, you know, and it, it, because they, they just corrupt everything that has any, any semblance of good and they try to inject themselves with the moral superiority of Satan. <laughs> what, is, okay. what is up is really down. So something very interesting today, a, a, a drone, Johnny, I, I, actually, I don't know if you guys saw this, but somebody used a drone and they went and they shot on top of the uh, Georgia Guidestones, right. right? Because they and said what, they saw blood. Yeah. And they saw blood two different times. Uh, Johnny, did you, did you see that? that? No, I yeah. haven't seen that. No, I'm looking for it now. Okay, yeah. yeah but, well, here's what happened. That, yeah, like you said, the guy with the drone, he, he monitors it a lot. That guy thinks it's a satanic monument, you know, and that there's been... Anyway, there was blood, he, he said, on top. I found a story from 2019 that uh, appears to show the top of the Georgia guy's stone. But then they went up there, and they took the blood, and they're going to test it. And then I never heard about it again. Well, yeah. now, is, is the story you're referencing from 2015, is that the same one? No, I think it, it might be more recent. Oh, okay. I right, well, I'll show, I'm going to share my screen and you can see it. Tell me if this is what, this story is from 2015 now. 2015? Yeah. God dang. Is this yeah, what, that's it. Are you telling yeah. me it's 2015? But still, that doesn't change anything. No, no, it doesn't. No, but I just, I mean, we never. Like, I guess look I never at that. That's up. a blood stain right, right there. From a, look, that looks just like the sacrificial rocks on Epstein Island, does it not? <laughs> oh, unbelievable, dude. But anyway, no, the cops had to investigate it. I, I don't know if it was then or whatever, but I read an article that they went up there and they took samples and took off. That's like people try to say that that LC Pesor isn't really, that they buried um, the real Lewis in France. But then a few years ago, somebody did a DNA test and it's not where they buried him. It is not. So people can say all they want that he died and he's there, but it's already been proven that the blood in the where they say they buried him isn't his. So oh, I mean, Hitler. I uh, someone did a test on the body. They found a Hitler, and it was a chick. Hey, right. Hey, was, uh, uh, yeah. Gone. yeah. For what it's worth, this is the quote from the story. It says deputies went up there. There was something that was bluish black, maybe where water had pooled. To the naked eye, it does not look red. In that video, it looks like someone quote unquote photoshopped it. To make it look like there was blood so that's that's according to the authorities who investigated right. it uh right. take that for what it's worth though yeah i, I don't take it worth anything one. but i also would say that's not it, it, dry, it drives me nuts that people will do that for clicks i don't think that that I, but then there's another story about the dna but like there's some dude that lives on the like real like 600 feet away from there that sold the land for them to build this on and he watches it. He's convinced there's something underneath there that's satanic, that's buried. But whatever I the case may be. I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't go, doubt it at all. Because even if they're saying that's not blood, it has been proven that witches have gone there. Witches, you know, witches have gone there at, with, and ha, with blood sacrifices with chickens. You know, how do we, When I was a kid, uh, witches <laughs> met fat chicks who wore goth. That's all it was. <laughs> right. So, right? But, but there obviously was blood there at some point, even if it wasn't human, but now there's never been blood. You know, I don't know. But also that's a big tourist trap for that area that has like 400 people living there. So, eh, well, you know. you know what? It also brings us to the fact that we have, which is what people have been talking about and what seems to be in full force right now is Agenda 21 and, and, and a, Agenda UN okay. 2030, which seems to be even more in play now. Right. And it's like I said, the 2030 included the pandemic, the pandemic. And uh, you guys, thank God Hillary didn't win because this was coming no matter what. And this would have been a hell of a lot worse. Um, but that agenda 2030, I read through it. And then if you read through the agenda of the CFR, the agenda of trilateral, the agenda of churches in England, it, they're, they're all they're all aligned. They're the same. And like Just I think said, about this. Just yeah. think about this. Well, look at what all the Democratic governors and mayors are doing right now. Now, just imagine Hillary Clinton in a presidency 
and what would be going on in this country right now? Well, we would, have, we would have we'd masks. We'd all have the tracking devices and all that shit. But did you? Damn right. Uh, have, what do you think about World War III happening? Do you hear about China hacking, uh, hacking the U.S., trying to get vaccine research information? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, a big thing that just uh, somebody brought up was that um, um, for some, uh, whenever I start talking about real stuff, my internet goes to shit. So if you don't <laughs> think they're, they're listening they to me, you're crazy. Am I, I, am I keep going, your internet's not good. Yeah, because you're not making it good, and we know it. All right? Johnny? Thoughts? What? I know you want to talk shit. Real quick, what uh, did you see that story? Is there anything interesting about that story? Did you see the guy who got murder suicided, uh, who was investigating coronavirus oh, DNA? In yeah, yeah. yeah. How, that, that oh, was. Right, I saw that. I'd love yeah. to know what he was because they said he was really on the verge of like some kind of breakthrough. Of but course, they man, it. and they don't want that because they want to own it. Right. They, but also, they, yeah, they created it, and then they also create the vaccine. But, you know, David Icke said they're also admitting that they haven't isolated the corona-19 virus. So how could they have a vaccine or a test for a strand of something that they don't have isolated yet? It doesn't make any sense. And he said that a couple days ago, and that was taken down right away. But also, I think they want to put a chip in us. That ID 2020 is also under that Agenda 2030 at um, the UN, which is about microchipping all of us, and they, they sell it as everyone in the world now gets an ID. <laughs> really? Yeah. And you want to know why it's- my mind. Hey, wait up, you want to know why it's Corona-19? Because it's like the iPhone, Corona-20, iPhone 2, right. iPhone 3, that's why you put a name on it. Right. Why don't you just give right. it a new name if it's never gonna, if you're not gonna make another one of it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make any no sense, but also, you know, I do think Trump and uh, the military intelligence were prepared for it. Um, and I think he's playing along with the vaccine. I don't think that there's a chance in hell that uh, there's ever gonna, that that's gonna be something that we mandatorily have to do. It should never be, but they're selling it all. Like I told you, just like I was saying before, they're selling it under the guise of being a globalist and good to the world is far better than taking care of your own neighborhood. You know, why take care of ourselves and our starving and our homeless and our sick and our schools and our, why would we do that? We're so, we're so selfish in America. We should be taking care of everywhere else. And meanwhile, it's, they're just collecting our money. We're not, we're, it's not going back to us. It's going to the Federal Reserve, you know? Yep. Yeah. You know, I mean, dude, us. <laughs> we would, I mean, people need to really understand what kind of bullet we dodged. Like, oh like I know people don't want to believe that anybody in the government could do anything good. That's what we've been trained that, you know, that uh, we, that everybody's evil. Nobody's a good person. Now I'm not going to sit here and tell you Trump walks on water. I'm not, Doesn't. I could sit here forever and do a show uh, and I'm going to do a show. I just decide right now I'm going to do a show to, on though. what we should be upset about Trump on. And I guarantee you, you'll hear none of it on the news because the people who run, who signed the checks, actually like this stuff that trump is doing okay You're that's right. just the truth right but right go ahead you don't think that we didn't dodge a bullet do you think hillary clinton would arrest the jeffrey epstein ever right. nope we wouldn't even know who he is they were involved. nope but also the, the crazy thing that bothers never. me though, if she was here we'd be on lockdown right. we would they would they would this January. thing would go three years they'd be man our, our gun rights would be taken away we'd all be living on two thousand dollars a month yep. from the government that they UBI. could hold back and we'd all be all our health records if you didn't play ball if you criticize her just know just know she called the uh, la comedy club and told them to take down jokes about her that's -uh. who we were gonna put in <laughs> What an asshole. Imagine Trump doing that. No, Trump He'd loves it. He'd never do it. Listen, He'd I don't- He'd never I, do it. The only thing I know for sure is that Trump did, uh, the one thing I do think is that his goal is to end the Fed and have our money, our taxes go back to us. Well, I think he's just gonna taxes. hang it, hand it to different gangsters. But hey, I'm fine with that as long as it's not the same gangsters that's been running us. Dude, the fact that we need anybody, I mean, we should just hit the reset button on all of this. Right. And they just found the, the they just, because of this pandemic, found a way to get the money directly to the people. They found a way to get the money directly to the small businesses, skipping the banks, skipping the, 
you know, so now we have a thing where they, I put my, I'm sure you all did put my, you know, bank information in there. And one day I woke up and I had a $1,200 check. So, so they I have still that haven't got stuff. my money and I don't want it. I don't want any of it. it. Nope. But I wish we'd all just that, kind of go, you know, Hey, you remember when they told us we couldn't go to beaches and we did that? You remember when they said we couldn't meet up and we did that? What if we all said, guess what? I don't want to pay my taxes right now. I think he's abolishing the IRS because it's illegal. And, and I don't know. We can do a whole nother show on the act of uh, 18, was it 1871 when they incorporated D.C. It's, it's a whole nother can of worms. But, it, you know, they, the incorporation of D.C. is a part of this. Uh, what's so interesting is like, like people just don't realize what what we're up against. it's the same cabal it's the same cabal that's been since For ronald reagan which is bush's longer than that ball all the way to obama who is a bush he well he's a hinkley actually which is very interesting because they're tenth cousins oh you know everyone's like oh, intermarried. everybody's related how far back do you have to go bef before me and xg have a common fucking relative probably a lot closer than you think <laughs> you think That's you nice think theory. that mean xg could fi uh, find a a common thing within 10 generations i'll try i'm pretty good at research <laughs> all right you could do that you can come did, back on and prove us wrong did you ever see there's like a little girl that actually traced all the president yeah, but you'd understand something you're talking about a, a a powerful group of people who all get the same job you're talking about two dudes who like one's an armenian italian the other one's an illegal mexican okay it's like these two <laughs> shall not you know, good luck and i'm a german jew so this I is know. a <laughs> which is a lot of weirdness, but yeah. I mean, so, so they're both Hinkley's, which is very interesting because who I mean, shot I'm, Reagan? Hinkley. I'm an Italian German Jew, even a little crazier. Yeah. You, you're just everybody that lost a war right there. <laughs> um, so, so you have this cabal that goes from Ronald Reagan all the way to Obama, which is, which is the decay which is where like treason and, and, and selling out yeah. became part of, of, uh, you know. Well, I think we took the real turn with uh, Woodrow Wilson. And from yeah. that on, it was or a the plan. Worst. The worst of all plan. time. Yeah. I mean, we're going to find, I, you know, nobody, do you guys, you guys obviously know about the envelopes at the Bush funeral. Yeah. I mean, everybody's starting about. to come out with what was on them. Nobody what? has ever, ever, but remember, nobody covered it. Uh, I would tell people, I had to like show my parents. They didn't believe it. I had to tell so many people. Nobody believes it. My I don't favorite know thing is have. Jimmy Carter trying to find his envelope. <laughs> yes, sucker. He was just a pawn. He's like, where? He's like shaking his I envelope to see if it's going to fall out. I know. How about Laura? Looks at it. Looks at Bush. No, my favorite is Jeb Bush getting trust fund kid angry. <laughs> right. And he looked Which at the is all Bill Gates is, dude. We're going to do a show on Bill Gates, and I'm going to light this <laughs> motherfucker up. I, if I hear another person tell me about, I got to trust this guy, when everything he's done is just rich kid scumbag shit. He's no different than George Bush. He's no different than um, uh, well, uh, uh, Jared Kushner. These are trust fund kids. Right, but also the difference is he, he dropped out of Harvard his first year, never went back to school. And how did, and then it's not, you know, how much is with, well, at what point did he become somebody? It's these foundations. They, they established these foundations. Yeah, the his dad ran, right? a, ran, a, ran, a, ran, a, ran a Federal Reserve. It's the same thing with Zuckerberg. That whole Facebook movie story is completely oh, fabricated. Those no, no, two no. twins were just taken for a ride, and they're like, just say this, and you'll make billions of dollars. And right. all of a sudden, those two kids who just happen to be the ones who Zuckerberg stole his stuff from suddenly now are the first Bitcoin billionaires. How What's does the that common work out? Common denominator is Harvard in that situation. Oh yeah, but dude. At oh, yeah. the same then, time, um, you know, Zuckerberg within two hours of uh, listing Facebook, it was a $2 billion company. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What? And just that same day, <laughs> The Pentagon stopped their program called LifeLog, exactly. which is the Starbucks. exact yeah. same thing. I know. That's what they did. They just took it and they gave it to Zuckerberg because he's a Rockefeller. Right. And they just said, act like you're running this thing and you'll make right. more money than God and right. we'll be fine. 
and right. then you're just gonna. Well, that's and why he told seems like such an twins. idiot in the Senate when he was testifying. You were like, "Is this guy a robot?" What? How about that? <laughs> Did you guys see that thing with Justin Trudeau where he's like, "Send your kids to the other room." Oh, <laughs> that was creepy. What was going on there? He, he told the like moms. A... Yeah, he told the moms, "Can you guys leave so I can talk to the kids by themselves?" Wasn't that crazy? Yeah, and I'll he punch like, that dude. Like a robot. Well, dude, so he he has a pedo symbol in his in his one of his companies. Yeah, well, a I lot mean, of them do. <laughs> I know, dude. It's just weird. It's like that's a whole nother level. I'm just like it's just they don't know what they're doing, and sometimes it's purposeful, you know. Well, no. Mel, it was a yeah. great show. We broke it down. We've changed people's lives. Um, <laughs> we truly well, are freedom fighters. You know, um, I just think people need to start asking, you know, what is going on? Where, where is our money going? Where are our taxes going? What is the Fed? How does a private bank collect yeah. our tax dollars? Yeah. I mean, people need to start, uh, uh, you know, if there's anything that saddens me, there's a couple things when you do a show that are very rough to accept. That is... YouTube is going to just destroy any of my views. I mean, the show's never been bigger, I've, but I'm getting smaller and smaller fucking numbers on YouTube. Yeah. And now yeah. Google's fucking with Google Play. I know that for a fact. And okay. And then another thing is like, I'm just trying to save the retarded. <laughs> and it's just like, if, if we could make a deal where like certain sections of the company of the country can get certain things like, Hey, this area can get, you know, we can live by the constitution, this area. Okay. You guys can get all the globalist bullshit you want. The problem is they're going to take California and that's the best weather. And I got to go live in South Dakota, you know, where it's, it's below it's so zero. Hard. It broke my heart to leave, but I felt like California had become, LA had become such a cesspool, and I didn't agree with anyone. the weather anywhere else. I know, it's the worst part. Oh, I miss it. I miss it every day. I loved my house. I loved my gym. But, I, you know, I had to leave. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't stand the people well, anymore. You went to New York, which is like... Word. yeah. I mean, it's like, it's well, like... Well, I really went to Florida first, and then, I got, you know, when you're <laughs> in our business, you can only go, you can only go so, like, certain places that you can work and make money to put into your, my little pension. Oh, I wanted to, I wanted to tell you guys today, I got a, a nice email from SAG that uh, we, they have a uh, Screen Actors Guild town hall tomorrow with Adam Schiff for all members of Screen Actors Guild. Oh, yeah, and then my, then, I you know, I'm Armenian, Genesis, uh, you know... We got we got Glendale. They're inviting Adam Schiff to be on like these these like Sky. I should have gone on it. Why didn't I go on it? I, I, How do these people not know? I mean, they do know. They're, they're just listen, man. Actors are just there. It, it sucks because they just want to act. They just want to play make believe to be able to do ago. that. You have to get greenlit by every one of these 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 door these these the private people. school dorks. That if you don't play ball, like they think they're open-minded because they have a black boyfriend and gay friends. And it's like they're the most closed mind assholes I've ever met in my life. Well, there's no, there's no value anymore to them in talent or craft or earning it or, you know, the millions of years that it takes to like become a stand-up or get in the DGA. Now, if you fit a certain criteria and go through some five-week program, you're going to be the director of that, of that episode and not the guy who has Emmys and has been working 35 years, strictly based on that your uh, sexual gender or color is something. Not on, like, it, it ended. It's it ended. just laziness. And, well, and, and, dude, the truth of the matter is it only happens on the lower level. It's all bit parts and small parts. And, you know, it's like the Oscars so white. It's never going to change, man, because people have to give up their seats. And these people want change after they get theirs. Right, right. Well, it's like the the elite, uh, you know, the, the uh, what are they called? Like what they're all saying, they're saying, you know, you got to listen to us because we know better. Those are the same people running that, you know, it's the same people. And, you know, every time everybody. I see it. I'm just going to tell you that. I hate everybody. It's like with Deborah Messing, every time a show gets canceled, she gets another one. And I'm like, I know 50 great actresses that deserve a shot. Nope. Dude, and if I, I hear another out. female comic talk about how hard it is to be a female comic and they just get show after show after show. I mean, like, 
I've never seen. Well, I like, dude. I love comics. everybody, and it's not even the good feel. Like, right, it's, it's like, unbelievable. People. These funny comics yeah. out there, and they can't get anything going. And then these fucking hacks. It's just like well, unbelievable. You know. I know. I know. All I right, friends tell that them where were. They can find you. Tell them where they can find you. Well, I'm not, I'm kind of underground. I'm, oh uh, shit. I'm, those are person underground yeah, yeah dude what are you doing hurting the children under there no <laughs> all right mel we gotta do it again i love your I'm energy. impulsive woman impulsive woman on uh on twitter manic in manhattan thank you for coming in defending thank me thank you for having to me the, to that guy who said this guy said when he heard adam green say that hitler's a zionist he stopped it and started crying <laughs> Tim Fall hat is not for you, child. Okay? Adults are talking. Go sit at the kids' table. All right? <laughs> Go sit at the kids' table. Thank you, Mel. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Thank you Johnny. Thank you, Thank you, XG. Thank you, it's always a pleasure. We'll See do it again time. soon, everybody. Take care. Enjoy your day. All right? Goodbye. Bye. Good day, Swarm. Goodbye, Swarm. Swarm up. Take care, everybody. Oh, wow. Bye. Go deep, homeboy. <laughs> Aaron, open your mind. <laughs> Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. <laughs> That's some interdimensional <laughs> shit. <laughs> Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Tim Foil hack. Tim Foil hack.